Yeah, 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 it's your boy E3. Son of the legendary godfather, gangster rap, Eric Easy, right? And yeah, you rockin' with Knuckle TV. You know, we rich and ruthless, baby. Once again, Knuckle TV. Rich and ruthless, baby. We choose to keep it real. Really, though. Hello, everybody. Today, we are talking to Todd Dankin of Digipath Labs out of Nevada. Todd, how are you? I'm good, CJ. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Awesome. So everybody watching, Todd and I go back. We were uh, indirectly related to one of the first pub co's in the cannabis space back, back, back in the day. Long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> uh, over 10 years ago, I think. Yeah. And then uh, today, you know, we've had uh, our run happenings with COVID, and you are one of the unbroken soldiers to make it through and yeah. thing which is a difficult business to begin with yeah so sure. why don't you uh tell the audience who you are a little bit of background about you and about digipath sure sure yeah so um i founded uh digipath back in 2014 and uh prior to my digipath adventure um i was with another publicly traded uh, cannabis company called phototron um and we were one of the you know first 10 or so uh, publicly traded cannabis companies back in 2009 seems like forever ago right i can't even believe how long ago it's been right um and then prior to that i've been in the, i was in the entertainment uh, world i was in the technology world for a little while and uh i literally ended up in cannabis uh in 2009 looking for a really good trend you know i was coming off a big uh, technology play and um you know, we were looking for what's the next trend, and it was really grow your own uh, cannabis, right? So uh, we bought that uh, uh, Phototron company, we took them public, and then, uh, you know, as I worked my way through the grow aspect of things and into the hydroponic uh, aspect of things, um, that sort of wormed me into uh, the, uh, the, the testing space, which uh, I've been in for the last uh, seven or eight years almost. Uh, I can't believe it's been so long, but yeah, we have a, a big lab, a uh, cannabis testing lab here in Las Vegas. We've been open since uh, 2015, and uh, we're about 85, 90,000 samples in. And, uh, you know, we test for everything from potency to safety and uh, everything in between. And it's been uh, quite a ride. Good. So before you get into that, I'm even going to date myself even more, but right. the, the elders in the group, Everybody had a Phototron right. in their closet in That's high right. school. And uh, we were part of rebranding that with you all back in yeah. the day. Yeah. Everything. So a very nostalgic uh, piece of the cannabis industry because that's where, you know, the, I think probably the first grow at home solution, that's right. you know, outside of going in your garden, indoor solution existed. Yeah, I've, I've grown a lot of things in, uh, in Phototrons over the years. <laughs> and uh, uh, I've grown a lot of vegetables in, in Phototrons as well. But uh, we even took the Phototron on the Martha Stewart show. And, uh, you know, we put tomatoes in it and said, look how great this is for tomatoes. <laughs> you know, uh, that was um, pretty Snoop days. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, but, yeah, it, it's been a lot of fun, uh, the industry. And you're right. And, you know, the Phototron has been around for, uh, you know, almost uh, 30 years. And uh, it is was one of the original grow your own right in your closet, <laughs> you know, system uh, for cannabis. Yeah. So a couple things, the, the testing industry or, you know, as a whole is, and it was super competitive. Yeah. It's, I don't want to use the word. It's uh, over-regulated. It My is. personal experience, <laughs> I would say it's not exactly applicable to what, they're trying to accomplish and we'll blame it on the industry being young um, and just a ton of loopholes for y'all to yeah. jump through and, you know, not a lot of support to get through those loopholes with the regulators. You take all that, which we'll get into in detail, and then you, you tie it into COVID. And one of the big focuses of Nuggle and, you know, with what we're doing, you know, we're one of the people that made it too, but marketing to ancillary companies and we touch everybody that's the beautiful thing about nuggle we touch investors packaging companies testing right, right. we've seen so many companies go away 
So that's always a focus of we want to focus the spotlight on the people that didn't go away and that made it through COVID and were able to adapt and pivot, if you will. You know, tell us about the experience of when you guys first got hit with COVID as a company, how you navigated through it and where you ended up after it was done. Sure. Um, you know, the, the COVID world was very, very strange. You know, the one wonderful thing that came out of this whole COVID, uh, you know, <laughs> debacle, right, which is really what it made everybody in America think, right? It's like, what is going on in the world, right? It, it was, you know, just commerce and just stopped, right? Everything just stopped. I literally rode my bike down Las Vegas Boulevard, you know, during COVID because everything was shut down. It was the eeriest, strangest thing. But from a business standpoint, you know, you certainly had to start taking care of your employees, right? Because, you know, it was very crucial to keep them here and to keep them, you know, uh, well and to make sure that nobody was getting sick and all of that. But, but what I was saying was the good thing that came out of COVID was that cannabis was made essential, right? It became this product that patients can't live without and that customers can't live without, not only here in Nevada, but all over the country. And it changed uh, the perception, if you will, of cannabis from the non-cannabis user, right? It's all of a sudden, it sort of validated that this was really something that people couldn't live without. So that's the good thing that came out of COVID from the, from the cannabis perspective and from the industry. But literally, everything slowed down for like the first, you know, oh my God, like I think it was around March, right? When everything started to shut down and, and except for all of these essential things, right? And the cannabis industry was an essential thing. So we actually got pretty busy because what happened was, is, uh, you know, certainly the people in Las Vegas, they just started buying and buying and buying and buying because they didn't know when they were going to be able to get more, even though there was no limit on that. You know, all of the dispensaries went to uh, delivery models, you know, all of their bud tenders now became delivery drivers. And that's how they were distributing, you know, the cannabis in town. So the good thing for the lab side of things is that all of that still has to be tested, right? So it still has to be tested whether you walk into a dispensary or you're getting a delivery. So uh, it, it caused the chaos in the fact that the supply chain changed. We couldn't get, you know, pipettes, but pipette tips for because, you know, everybody was doing PCR COVID testing. And that was the priority for all of the lab supplies that we were using. So we had to get really creative with finding not only the proper uh, PPE, but also just the, you know, the one use plastics that we use all the time and the expendables that we use in a lab. And even today, you know, we have 12 or 13 vendors for one item because we have to go down the list and you know the supply chain is definitely uh jacked up and well, and from a people standpoint you know it scared a lot of people and you know a lot of people didn't know what to do or didn't know how to react and lots of people got really depressed because you know you couldn't do anything except come to the lab and go home and come to the lab and go home and come to the lab and go home right and uh so you know we dealt with that the best way we can we always uh like to take care of uh, the folks that are taking care of us, which are, of course, our chemists and our microbiologists and uh, certainly our operations staff. Um, you know, so we, we just tried to, you know, come together, you know, and, and really treat everybody like a family member. And, you know, if someone had specific individual needs, we addressed it, right? If a customer had specific individual needs, we addressed it. And, uh, you know, I think we came through stronger than ever uh, which is good because, uh, you know, we had the potential of losing it all, like everybody. Yeah. Well, not only that, I think probably the people that you're you're doing business with today, as opposed to before COVID, because you have a very good read. There's very few companies that use two testing labs at the same time. Right. So you would probably have a very good read on what the volume of business is with any one entity out there. Oh, sure. Sure. Uh, you know, and just seeing the turnover. How has COVID, after being post-COVID and seeing so many companies come and go and, and move and adapt, how has it affected not just how you have to adapt to the compliance of things, but also the credibility of the testing and the results that you're putting out? Have you seen 
changes with that because I would imagine companies that are desperate tend to do desperate things. And, you know, if you have to make a decision on maybe fudging a THC level, you know, to keep that client, you're probably more prone, not you, obviously, but somebody would be more prone to do it yeah. as, you know, they're going out the door. And we've seen a lot of things with cultivators too, because now, you know, the price of cannabis fluctuates so much. And even in California right now, it's at an all time low. Yeah. So we're seeing, you know, those types of things. It's very difficult yeah. from my experience in California, which I'm going to assume is very similar to Nevada it is. to not just be compliant, but to do business with compliant people. But how yeah, it, is, <laughs> it is a little difficult. Look, there's going to be bad players in every industry, right? There's bad doctors, there's bad lawyers, there's bad plumbers, there's bad accountants, right? Um, and there, there's going to be bad operators, you know, in the cannabis space, especially, look, this is a, uh, you know, former black market industry still with a big black market side to it. Um, so the, and I say this affectionately, so I don't want it to say, you, you know, we've all broken the law if we've all smoked pot for more than five years, right? right? So I say it affectionately that we've all, we you know, we have this camaraderie of lawbreakers that we didn't think it was that big a deal, right? Because we were smoking weed and it was illegal, right? Um, but there there is this, um, you know, camaraderie of this, the, the guys who made it through and the guys who worked together to, to get through it all. But it is, it's a very over-regulated uh, portion of the industry. It is a necessary part of the industry, right? But, um, and, and some regulations, you know, are, are silly like everything, and some are necessary and, and, and definitely you need them, right? But, um, you know, I find that the bad players get weeded out eventually, right? And there are some, uh, some folks who cheat. I know them, I meet them, and I know it because I have clients who tell me. And the folks who really care about their, uh, you know, the cannabis industry and really doing the right thing and really wanting to be the best and really deliver a good product, they care about testing and they want to be honest with their customers and they want to, you know, do the right thing on a regular basis. And then the flip side of that is there's another guy who's in it for the money and will take any result. And sometimes they do pay for results. Uh, I, I've seen it happen uh, in California. I've definitely seen it happen here in Nevada. And, you know, it's really all about the regulators, uh, you know, getting on top of that and making sure that that doesn't happen uh, by really checking the data, you know, doing an audit and making sure that the data that the machine spits out is the data that's going on the certificate of analysis, right? Um, and I think, too, as the industry evolves, because having the highest THC count doesn't necessarily mean you're getting the best product. In fact, that you know, is for sure. Yeah. It, there's so many other contributing factors to it. Uh, yeah. And I think, you know, looking at, you know, going, I always look at the industry resetting and I think it's necessary. And, you know, I think since Nuggles been uh, born, you know, we've probably gone through three or four, but, you know, it's good because the industry evolves and you have a sure. different degree and a level of doing business. The yeah. let's talk about the technology. So sure. going into this new era, let's call it reset four. I got to imagine that the, the testing technology has evolved to become extremely more sufficient in being efficient in price per pound and how you deal with your customers and what they're able to test at minimum levels and maximum levels and things like yeah. that. You know, walk somebody through as if I was a customer, uh, you know, and looking to get things tested. Why is DigiPath? a better solution than someone else maybe. Sure. Um, first off, I think we have the, and I don't think I know that we have, we really have the best customer service in the industry because that's what this industry is really based on, right? Is good customer service. You want to do business with somebody you can trust. We like to call ourselves your science partner, right? We have a lab full of equipment that uh, cost a couple of million dollars that is very sensitive instrumentation that does exactly what we needed to do and exactly what you needed to do. But you don't have to buy that stuff because we've already bought that stuff and we can do that stuff for you. So we well, really approach even if I did buy it, I couldn't use it. That's right. <laughs> right. That's right. Um, so we like to approach it that way. You know, we're, we become your science partner. 
because you need one. You know, you have to be able to pass microbiology, which is the, the most difficult thing. We have to make sure that nobody in your grow is doing anything incorrectly, like, uh, you know, spraying it with pesticides or anything like that. You want to make sure your water is clean, all of that stuff, you know, and, and the people that care, care. <laughs> right. And they do the right thing. Um, but yes, we have a full blown uh, uh, laboratory with um, uh, redundancy as well. We have uh, both Agilent uh, machines, Cyax machines, and also uh, BioRad and BioMaryU microbiology machines. And all of this stuff is designed for blood and urine and environmental testing. And then we've adapted it like the rest of the industry has adapted it towards cannabis. You know, we test uh, everything, flour, extracts, edibles, lotions, potions, pills, whatever is made with cannabis Absolutely. has to be tested. Yeah, has to be tested. And we use, you know, I went with Agilent because, you know, they are top of the line. They're a big billion dollar company, you know, um, and their machines are real workhorses and allow us to get, really low limits uh, uh you know limit of detection is where is is our zero right the lowest detection that the machine can give you is our zero right so the agile machines allow for very very precise measurements and uh very very precise levels of uh of you know both both uh, uh lod and loq which is um which is le level of detection and level of quantification, right? So the numbers fall somewhere in between there based on state regs. So we test for cannabinoids, we test for terpenes, we do uh, nine different cannabinoids, we do 17 different terpenes, we test for heavy metals, uh, cadmium, mercury, lead, and arsenic. We also test sometimes for uh, chromium and nickel because people use scissors, you know, to, uh, to trim their weed and uh, very often we find a little chromium. What's the craziest there. thing you found in testing? The craziest thing I think we found, we give everything a visual inspection also. So every time it uh, something comes into the lab, we take a photograph of it that goes on the certificate of analysis, and then we put it under a microscope to give it a visual inspection. So the weirdest thing I've ever seen in that visual inspection was a microscopic scorpion. And... We, we did a little research on these microscopic scorpions. I didn't even know I could have gone my whole life without knowing this stuff, right? But uh, it turns out that in some parts of California, Arizona, Nevada, and New Mexico, uh, these microscopic scorpions live, and they, they breed in our nostrils and in our ears, and they, <laughs> they, they sleep with us in our beds, and they're literally everywhere, and you can't see them, but under a microscope, you know, it looks like, a scorpion, right? So that was one of the weirdest things that that we found, you know, uh, giving it a visual inspection for sure. So did the scorpion pass the test? No, no, we had to, we had to actually fail that lot of, uh, of, of. What did, the, what did the customer say? Was uh, were they as surprised as you were? They were as uh, as surprised as we are, and then you know they went into pest control mode, you know, and uh, bombed everything in their facility. And uh, we've never seen it since. So they got rid of the problem for sure. Now, on the financial side, how do you address, I'm a small brand. I don't have, you know, capital to send you 2,000 pounds of flour. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I got one dispensary that's going to start selling my product. Mm -hmm. Can I do business with you and still of sell course. my product? Yeah, whether you have one sample or 100 samples, you know, a day, whatever it is, the answer is yes. That's okay. what I always say to our customers, too, is like, look, the answer is always yes. We'll just work out whatever the details are. Right. Yeah. So, uh, again, that goes back to customer service. You need a science partner. We will provide those services for you. Right. And whether you have, like I said, one sample or 10 samples, we treat you the same. You know, it's, your pricing might be a little different. And the guy bringing me 100 samples might get a little break on the on the price, you know. But, you know, over time, it all, it's all a wash anyway. You know, good. Yeah, that's a big challenge people are running into over here on the uh, west west coast. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's just because you know margins are shrinking and shrinking more. 
Yeah, well, testing in California is a little different than Nevada because there's, I think there's 36 testing labs in uh, in California, you know, a state that has 40 million people and over 5,000 licensed cultivators, right? In Nevada, right, there's 3 million people here, uh, but 40 million people a year visit Nevada, right? So um, that that'll happen, but there's only 160 cultivators and producers and the numbers are higher because they separate recreational and medical but everybody's both right and everybody gets two licenses so there's only really about 160 cultivators and there's 11 laboratories so there's a lot of labs and not a lot of customers you know which is the opposite of california and in in nevada we test every five pounds of flour and in california it's every 50 pounds of flour so the cost per pound in California is much more cost effective and you can charge a lot more money for testing uh, because the demand is higher because there's fewer labs per cultivator or per distributor. So what's the plan? Are you planning to grow? Or are you going to stay in Nevada? What's the big picture post COVID? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the plan has always been to expand, right? We're a publicly traded company. And, you know, we've always wanted to expand. We've been this close, right, in, you know, eight or nine deals. And whatever, for whatever reason, uh, it just didn't happen. Uh, whether it, you know, and it usually was, you know, the people that we were trying to do the deal with didn't really have what they said they had. And, you know, in the due diligence that we do, and because, like I mentioned, we're a public company, we do serious due diligence, right? And, you know, the cannabis industry is known for, you know, like we mentioned, you know, black market bookkeepers even, right? So, um, you know, when you do the due diligence and you find the flaws, it has always ended whatever deal we were in. But with that said, uh, we are definitely actively pursuing uh, other deals, uh, joint ventures in up and coming states. Uh, we would definitely like to find the right person in the right position where we can really help them get open quickly right? We can, you know, hand over SOPs, operating manuals, quality manuals, employee manuals, marketing materials, all the stuff that we've done over the last eight years. And we're already done, right? So now we have the ability to, you know, it's like getting the McDonald's handbook, you know, put the fryer over here, put the shake machine over here, put the cash register here and follow these rules. And now you can open up quickly. We're also yeah. ISO certified and we've done that uh, several times now. And that is mandatory. I didn't, uh, I didn't know that. So ISO for people that don't know is a, uh, a standard that you have to get graded on and it's, it's big in the manufacturing industry. That's right. Well, that was uh, a requirement. That's yes. A big yeah. It is mandatory in, in most States now. And it's a uh, ISO 17025 and it's laboratory certification, but oh. uh, it's a bear and uh, it is a process for sure. But yeah. what it does is it guarantees that we're doing what we say we're doing. That's what ISO kind of does. They review yeah. your SOPs, they sit and they watch the analysts do their work, and they make sure that they're following everything that we we're, that we say we're doing, that we're doing. Uh, they also check up on, you know, chemicals and standards and all of the stuff that you got to keep around and make sure it's safe and make sure it's current. And, uh, you know, they look at really everything. They, they really look under the hood and spend a lot of time there. <laughs> Um, and, and like, like I said, make sure that everything we're doing is safe for the consumer and it's everything that we're supposed to be doing. Well, exciting stuff. I mean, we're going to be working together. We're going to be, uh, launching the rich and ruthless brand out in your neck of the woods. And I'm nice. sure you have some uh, samples coming through in the awesome. near future, hopefully. Awesome. So if you're an investor buying stock, if you're a brand, a grow in Nevada, how do we find you? Easily, easily. Digipath.com, D-I-G-I-P-A-T-H. That is our corporate site.com. And then we have digipathlabs.com. Uh, and uh, you can just Google us. We come up. We have lots of information. Uh, we have a pretty active blog. And, um, you know, we've done some good SEO, so you can find us easily. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, but we're really easy to find. Uh, go online. You can even place your order right online, you know, right on our website. You can click and just uh, order, you know, place your order uh, nice and simple. But we're on Facebook and Instagram and all the uh, socials. It's at Digipath. And, uh, you know, we're, we're here and we're 
we do a lot of R&D. We do lots of compliance sampling. And uh, anything you need, uh, we're here to help. We also do lots of consulting, you know, not only here in Nevada, but uh, in other places that are just coming on board. Uh, so if you need some help in uh, and need to know about testing, you know, give us a ring. Okay, good. And I think we, if it hasn't been released already, we have an article coming out so you can find DigiPath and Nuggle yep. Magazine too. Awesome. Yeah, make sure you pick up Nuggle Magazine and uh, read about uh, actually a lot of the stuff that we're, uh, that we're talking about here and more. Yeah, well, we just did the big acquisition in Jamaica. So uh, we're going to do uh, pick, probably take you up on the consulting level. And awesome. We'll see you in Kingston shortly. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> I love Jamaica. I haven't been there in a really long time. Uh, yeah. I grew up in South Florida and uh, I went there one time for, uh, I used to work for Playboy TV a hundred years ago. And I went there for a, a Playboy job and, and had a great time in Jamaica. I love it there. Well, we can probably do a whole interview just on the uh, Playboy TV. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> All right, my man. Well, congratulations making it through. The company's awesome. And it's good to talk to you again on this level. Yeah, and, you too. Yeah. And um, thanks for joining us. All right. We'll see you soon. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing the mag. All right. Take care. You rockin' with Nuggle TV, you know we rich and ruthless, baby. Once again, Nuggle TV, rich and ruthless, baby. We choose to keep it real. Really though. Brought to you by Kaya Herb House. Respect the roots. Come.